Hi, it's Dr. Chafee again from the Plant Free MD podcast. So today I just wanted to talk a bit about autoimmune disorders. This is something that's obviously escalated in, in severity and number over the past few decades, and seemingly it's coincided with the drastic overhaul in our dietary uh, regime that we've taken as, as a country in America and then throughout the rest of the world following that. And as you see these countries adopting these dietary regimes such as you know less meat less fat more plants more fruit more vegetables more sugars more grains they all see this rapid increase in autoimmune disorders and severity of autoimmune disorders these these are obviously very devastating you know the treatment for crohn's these things be you know, tens of thousands of dollars every few weeks so this is obscenely expensive treatment and these are, these treatments while they can be effective they have severe side effects or can and they may not be a complete treatment i mean they're only treating symptoms really they're not you know they're not addressing the underlying condition they still need surgeries later on in life they'll suffer with this forever it's incurable right basically because they don't know what the hell's causing it so obviously they don't know how to cure it okay and before we had uh, these these treatment me uh, methods you know people just just really suffered with these sorts of things they had to go on you know steroids when we had steroids we didn't have these things before people really suffered so so these aren't new diseases but they're certainly much more prevalent now than they were but these were well known these were well established okay so you go back and people have actually been treating these and looking at how to treat these for quite some time. Dr. J.H. Salisbury, not everyone knows this, but a Salisbury steak, which is basically like, you know, hamburger patty without a bun. I always thought it was a place name named after Salisbury, England, but in fact, no, it's named after Dr. J.H. Salisbury, who was a New York doctor in the 1800s, who did a 30 year research trial into the optimal nutrition for human beings, lived with the Native Americans, saw what they eat, basically just meat, and they lived to be, you know, great ages, you know, 110, 115 years old routinely okay he wrote a book called the relation between alimentation and disease alimentation means our digestion okay so the things that we eat and our disease basically arguing that the food we eat cause these diseases that's actually the entire premise of a book i'm writing as well because as i argue you know these so-called chronic diseases that we're treating they're basically the mainstay of modern medicine are not diseases per se but in fact malnutrition and toxicities toxic buildup of species inappropriate diet and a lack of species specific nutrition right so too many plants that, with harmful chemicals because they don't want to be eaten so they produce these chemicals to deter you and not enough meat not enough fat okay and these all contribute to that specifically with autoimmune disorders dr salisbury found that you could cure c-u-r-e cure things like crohn's ulcerative colitis rheumatoid arthritis gout by putting people on a pure red meat and water diet, okay? This is, this is you know, well documented. He, he wrote his book. There's been many, many scientific uh, publications in peer reviewed journals for decades, maybe even a full century. Even as, as recently as 1975, there was a book called The Stone Age Diet that basically argued the exact same thing. You know, he was a gastroenterologist and he said, look, you know, all these diseases that, that I treat, you don't need, you don't need me as long as you eat meat and only eat meat, okay? Then 1980, all the recommendations came around saying, don't eat meat anymore, cholesterol causes heart disease. Everything we knew about all of these diseases and their treatment and the health of humanity just got thrown out the window, okay? So we need to rediscover this and we need to get this, you know, well-known established knowledge back out into the medical community and especially into the, the, the uh, general public at large, okay? So, Dr. Salisbury created the Salisbury steak because these people's digestions were so chewed up because they didn't have steroids, they didn't have these medications, you know, these biologicals that would suppress the immune system. Okay, so they were just in dire straits. And so he made the Salisbury steak, which is basically a way of grinding uh, beef into sort of separating out the gristle so that you only got the meat, you only got the fat. And your body can absorb basically 100% of that. So you rest your bowels, you rest your gut. It's it's easily absorbed, and you you know it doesn't cause any sort of residue. So you're not having to pass this stuff through like you would with fiber. You cannot absorb fiber. You cannot break down fiber. It has to pass through, and that's making your body work and your colon work over time. Okay, and that's hard on it. Okay. So he found that putting people on this diet 
reverse this problem and made it go away. Same with rheumatoid arthritis. These are things that, that did not have treatments for probably a century after that, okay? And so this is something that uh, is being rediscovered now. So people now in the, in the autoimmune uh, community are rediscovering that, hey, you know, if you eliminate certain things out of your body, nightshades, carbs, grains, potatoes, these sorts of things, that you'll have less and less flare-ups, that you'll do a little better, okay? And there are studies to support this, okay? There's a elemental, um, there's studies showing that the elemental diet, elemental diet basically just getting down just the, the, the key macronutrients and micronutrients and just putting those in a drink basically so you just absorb these really easily you just get what you just get the nutrients that you need that putting people with Crohn's on an elemental diet was more effective than steroids okay you know I see consults all the time people saying oh well you know we're on this different you have this patient on all these different treatments it's not really working you know we want to refer them for surgery and you know, I got in, actually got uh, uh, talking to uh, early on because I was I went up and basically pointed these things out and pointed out these studies to people because they said I really don't want surgery. Is there any other thing that I any other options I could do? And I said, well, actually, you know, there are these studies that show that going on an elimination diet and eliminating out certain things would actually help you. I didn't tell them what to do. I didn't say anything else. I just said, here's some resources. You make your own decision. And and people got very upset at that because you know that's that's not what they traditionally do it's like well maybe you're doing the wrong thing okay so multiple studies showing this okay there's a study showing that uh, it's more efficacious in children than steroids and obviously you don't want to put children on steroids because it can severely you know screw up their development okay um they found that um it kept crohn's in remission and kept people you know, without having flare-ups for longer, okay, than, than other treatments, okay? So it got people out of acute flare-ups and it kept them out of acute flare-ups, okay? This is just diet. That's all it's doing. Elemental diet, you're just giving them the nutrients, right? But you're not giving them the spinach and the broccoli and the potatoes that these nutrients come into, you know, come, come with, okay? So what is that saying? That's saying that there are harmful elements in the food that you're eating that's causing these flare-ups, Okay, that, that's a pretty straightforward relationship. Okay, and so that, that again goes to Dr. Salisbury's point and my point that it's the food that's causing the disease. Okay, all right, and it's not really a disease at all, but it's a toxicity and it's a toxic reaction to this harmful element in genetically susceptible people. You know, not everyone's going to get Crohn's, but it's not going to be good for any of us. Okay, but people that are genetically susceptible when they get this toxin, they will have an increased reaction, an autoimmune reaction, okay? There was also a clinical trial showing that an exclusion diet, again, excluding out um, you know, fiber and starches and all these sorts of things, kept Crohn's patients in remission for up to 51 months, okay? Um, or current uh, uh, recurrence rate of less than 10% per annum, okay? Contrasted with a starch-based high fiber diet, which kept zero patients in remission, okay? Didn't work at all, okay? So what is this telling you? This is telling you that starch, fiber, these can be indicative of causing, or at least perpetuating uh, Crohn's and, and other sort of uh, IBD issues, okay? So why is this, okay? So, so we talk about different toxins and elements and this, that, and the other. We don't know exactly why these things kick off your autoimmune disorders. However, they are very pro-inflammatory, okay? They, they cause immune uh, dysfunction, okay? So you're increasing inflammation and you're increasing you know, this, the, the, this inflammatory you know, response in your body. And then people that are genetically susceptible, when they have this, they have this autoimmune dysregulation where their body starts attacking themselves. Okay, so there is something in plants, and there's certain plants that kick things off more than others. Okay, so grains, carbs, fiber, nightshades, these things are going to be uh, much more commonly associated with flare ups and poor outcomes in the autoimmune population. This goes for, for all the autoimmune population, but you know, specifically these studies deal with Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Okay, so there are toxic elements in these plants. These plants cause inflammation. That inflammation causes autoimmune dysregulation. Okay, and then you get Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, and other autoimmune issues, rheumatoid arthritis, and so forth in the genetically susceptible populations. So, 
you know, there's other things. There's a fasting mimicking diet, which has been shown to be very, very effective in treating things like type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. In fact, in animal models showing that you can actually reverse type 1 diabetes in mice, which is crazy. You're actually regrowing the beta islet cells in the pancreas to create more insulin. So these, these animals are able to start producing insulin again. Okay, that's very significant. And then, you know, reversing, you know, uh, insulin, um, ins peripheral insulin resistance, and making it possible for for people to go off medications and so forth. So this was because they showed that fasting did basically the same thing. They said, well, fasting is really hard, so why don't we do a, f a diet that mimics fasting? Okay, and basically put people on, you know, fatty meat, you know, maybe some vegetables, but basically a ketogenic diet. And they thought, wow, this mimics fasting, and fasting is good. No, 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 fasting mimics. Ketosis. Fasting mimics a carnivore diet. Fasting mimics the metabolic state that we're supposed to be in at all times anyway. That's how our body is supposed to work. And so if you're fasting or you're just not eating this nonsense, you're going to be in the right biochemical state. Okay? And your body's going to work better. So they've used the fasting mimicking diet, again, just basically a ketogenic diet, um, you know, getting closer and closer to a carnivore diet, you know, to help. Uh, with Crohn's. They found it's very efficacious, okay? They found that there was uh, uh, very efficacious in inflammatory bowel disease. There's a treatment me modality for uh, inflammatory bowel disease, promotes GI re uh, regeneration, reduced um, IBD pathology uh, in multiple clinical trials, okay? So again, this, this goes back to what Dr. Salisbury showed in the 1800s. You know, you put people on you know, an elemental diet, just get the nutrients they need, meat, has everything you need, meat, fatty meat, right? And your body absorbs it, right? And so you, it's not going out through your colon, you're not getting rid of all this waste, okay? And you can rest your bowels. This is, this is what we do in general surgery as well. People have a problem with their colon, you rest the bowels, you put them on a low residue diet with no fiber and so forth, right? And so, not right, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you, that's right. So we put people on a low residue diet in order to rest their bowel, to give it a chance to heal. Okay, well, what does that mean? That means the fiber in these sorts of elements are causing harm and can cause harm to your gut. And when you have surgery or an infection or something like that, it's even more important to get rid of this stuff. Okay, but it's always important. It, it helps everyone. Okay, so multiple studies just, just in recent years showing that diet is, is uh, you know, very much uh, affects Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Okay. And now we're seeing, you know, anecdotally, I've had patients myself, and, and I know in, in the carnivore community we talk about these things, people are really having uh, wondrous results with, um, you know, using diet to get rid of their autoimmune diseases. Because again, these are not diseases, okay? You have a genetic susceptibility, and then you have an environmental trigger to a toxin in various plants, and that kicks off this uh, autoimmune dysregulation and dysfunction that causes serious disease, okay? Uh, very famous people such as you know, Makayla Peterson, Jordan Peterson's daughter, for those um, you know, who are familiar with them, she reversed and basically eliminated her rheumatoid arthritis. She had a very severe extent. She talks about this uh, on, you know, in her, her show and so forth and her personal recounting of the story that she was very unwell and actually had to have two major joint replacements by the time I think she was 16. Okay, so, so that's, that's a devastating disease and illness when you have someone who's that young having to get major joint operations because those aren't gonna be the last joint operations that she has. She's you know, going to be signed up now for you know, a, a, every couple decades you know, having to, to re-up on these things, okay? So now she's off all medication. She's gone on a carnivore diet. She speaks about this. Uh, very openly on her podcast and so forth, that you know she's on a carnivore diet. She doesn't take any medications anymore. She's doing very very well for this. Okay, so this is something that we're seeing not only anecdotally but but in the evidence. Okay, in the literature, we have the literature going back to the 1800s. We had it spanning all the decades up until about you know 1975 when that book, The Stone Age Diet, came out, and then all of a sudden, bam, 1980. Forget about it. You know, forget everything you knew about this. Okay, and then we just started over from scratch, and people, you know, got a lot more sick, and got a lot more unwell, had a lot more problems. But we've come up with obscenely expensive treatments that don't work all that well, 
and cause harm because they you know they have serious side effects and they are insanely expensive okay well you know what's cheaper than not eating vegetables okay people say like well you know it's very hard it's very difficult it's so restrictive all these sorts of things it's a lot harder to live with Crohn's it's a lot harder to live with rheumatoid arthritis it's a lot harder to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on these treatments it's a lot harder to be on methotrexate all the time and have all the side effects from that okay it's a lot harder to deal with these sorts of diseases and illnesses it's a lot harder to have perennial medical issues that you have to constantly see a doctor for and eventually will wear you down you'll age prematurely and you'll die young okay so it sounds restrictive but i think the other lifestyle is much more restricted to that and that's why i personally uh, live a carnivore lifestyle and promote a carnivore lifestyle for those that that want that benefit so i hope that's helpful guys um let me know what you think in the comments let me know what else you'd like to hear about thanks Hey guys, thank you very much for taking the time out to listen to what I had to say. If you like it, then please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and podcast. And if you're on YouTube, then please hit that little bell and subscribe. And that'll let you know anytime I have a new video out, which should be every week, if not more. And if you could share this with your friends, that would help me get the word out and let me know that you like what I'm doing. Thanks again, guys.